the hoses are extremely important when we're considering our vacuum and our speed of vacuum. So no matter how powerful your pump is, it's not going to do any good if you're pulling through all kinds of restrictions before you ever get to refrigeration system. So the hose is going to be real important. Now a lot of people want to actually pull a vacuum through their manifold gauge set, but remember this is only a quarter inch. Just like when we did recovery, this is a major, major restriction and slows our vacuum down just incredibly slow. You hear some people say, well, they don't like using a micron gauge because it takes too long. Well, those are usually the same people that are pulling through a manifold gauge set and also these quarter inch hoses. Just like we had the restrictions with recovery, we have restrictions with the single quarter inch hose. Now, what's also important about this is this hose is made for pressure. In other words, pushing out. When we pull a vacuum in this hose, we end up collapsing this hose down. The atmospheric pressure pushes on this hose and the hose being a quarter inch in diameter actually gets even smaller than that. And it's also possible to have permeation. In other words, the moisture from the air can actually permeate through this hose and end up in a vacuum. So we're not pulling in an adequate vacuum through our system. So we don't want to pull through these quarter inch hoses. And we also want to make sure we use hoses that are rated for vacuum. That's very important. We also want to do away with our manifold gauge set. And we do not want to use any kind of a low loss fitting, whether it's automatic or manual. These automatic low loss fittings are a major, major restriction. And just like our recovery, if we pull through our Schrader cores, it's going to be a massive restriction. Remember we have that little Schrader core, that little valve inside of there? That is a huge, probably one of the biggest restrictions. If we have, an, say, a 12 CF film pump or an 8 CF film pump, and we're trying to pull through a manifold gauge set, these quarter inch hoses, our valve cores inside of here, we're only looking at maybe a third of a CF film. So it doesn't matter how awesome your pump is if you have all these restrictions before you ever get it to your system. So we need to make sure we pull out these Schrader cores and that's where these vacuum rated Schrader core removal tools are going to be coming in. There's multiple brands of these. We want to make sure it's rated for vacuum. Most of these are rated for like 50 microns. So we want to make sure it's vacuum rated and we'll pull these Schrader cores out and then we pull a vacuum with this tool without going through a manifold gauge set and without going through these restrictive small quarter inch hoses. What we're going to be using is these large half inch hoses. These hoses are vacuum rated. They're designed specifically specifically for vacuum, so they're not going to crush down during atmospheric pressure. Now also it's important that whatever hose you use for vacuum, you only use those for vacuum and not for recovery. We want to keep the oil or as much as oil as possible out of these hoses. So these vacuum rated hoses are going to really speed up our process. Now think of it like a highway. So if we think about this large thick hose, that's going to be like an eight lane highway. It'll allow a lot of traffic to flow. If we look at these quarter inch hoses, it's going to be like a little country back route. It's going to take a very long time and the same amount of traffic would be very much backed up through that hose. So having these large half inch hoses are going to make a big difference. Now this particular hose has a quarter inch connection. So where I have my Schrader core removal tool and I take my Schrader core out entirely, I then use my quarter inch connection right on the back of my tool. This allows for fast flow, and I still have this valve where I can control my flow through there. So if I need to shut it off or add nitrogen, anything I need to do, I can control it right there. Now, a lot of people get concerned about this being a quarter inch connection. This quarter inch connection is completely hollowed out, and it's better to have a small temporary restriction right here versus an entire restriction the whole entire way through it. So this little quarter inch hose, this little connection is going to make a big difference, but the hose itself is a half inch. On the other side of this hose, I have a 3 8 inch connection. That's going to be allowing for much, much more flow. Now, what I like to use is two of these hoses, two individual hoses, one for the high side, one for the low side. Now I'm pulling very quickly with very little restriction through both sides straight to my vacuum pump. No manifold gauge set whatsoever. What I like about this particular vacuum pump is it has multiple connections on it. So I can actually put both of these hoses directly to my vacuum pump because that's what we call a little tree built into it. This vacuum pump has two different sizes on it. So I hook one hose up, but we can use a T or even build a tree for it. So we can hook both of these hoses straight to this vacuum pump. That's going to allow us to flow our gas a whole lot faster. We're going to get down to our microns a whole lot faster. We're going to start dehydrating a whole lot faster by removing these restrictions. Another thing that's important to note is they make several different types of trees. Yellow Jacket makes one at about $250, $300 that mount on here and it allows us multiple ports to hook to. 
Appian also makes a fitting like this that we can hook on top of our vacuum pump as well. And notice all of the multiple connections on this. Now this is only going to be applicable for refrigeration work. We have multiple different ports we can hook it up to. What's important about this, so we can say rack systems, I can hook up and start pulling multiple hoses in multiple locations and I'm now allowing a lot of flow. All of this is pulling through one set down into my pump. It's very quick and very fast. But you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on all this manifold equipment. You can actually make your own. You can get this at your local hardware store, and it's just these two connections. And by putting those connections, you can put it right on your vacuum pump, and you can make a T. And it's very simple to do. I also recommend using a product called Nylog. Nylog helps seal between those connections. It helps make a really good seal so that we're not pulling atmospheric pressure in. A lot of people complain that their vacuum's not holding, and really it's the connection. And sometimes the little O-rings get cracked or worn, and the Nylog helps keep those lubricated so that doesn't happen. And the Nylog also makes a good seal to your connection, a good seal on all of your fittings. So I do recommend that product. It really helps make your vacuum nice and dry and tight. So by doing this, we can exceptionally speed up our vacuum. The hoses are extremely, extremely overlooked. No matter how big and awesome your vacuum pump is, it's not gonna do anything if you're trying to pull through these small hoses. These big hoses are where it's at. There's multiple ways to hook this up and we're gonna be demonstrating this soon enough. But we gotta get rid of those restrictions. If we get rid of our Schrader cores or valve cores, we use our valve core removal tools, we get rid of that restriction. We use our big thick hoses so we're allowing plenty of flow straight to our vacuum pump. That's gonna speed it up and also we're using high quality vacuum pump oil we're keeping that oil changed next thing you know we're going to be down to where we're dehydrating we're boiling that water from liquid vapor in no time and as soon as we can get that water dehydrated that water out of the system and have it clean and dry and tight we'll be ready to add refrigerant to the system and have a long running system it's so going to be so important i'll give you some examples of what that vacuum is going to look like so what we're going to do is just do a quick demonstration of what that faster setup would look like so here on the suction side, I have my valve core would normally be removed, a valve core tool, and I have the large hose going straight to my vacuum pump. On the liquid side, I have the large hose straight to my vacuum pump. Its core removal tool is also set up. Here I have another hose with the valve on it, and this goes all the way over to my new tank of refrigerant, and that's on a scale. On this side, I have my adapter connected through another valve to my micron gauge. If I didn't have a vacuum pump that had two ports, I would use this adapter here. Right, my micron gauge is far from my vacuum pump. This way I can check microns right on the unit. When I get done pulling a vacuum, I can close off this valve and close off this valve and I can isolate it and I can watch for my decay test. Once to know that that's good, I can shut this valve off. That isolates my component here. Then I have my vacuum that I've already pulled through this. Now this hose cannot be your typical charging hose. It must be set aside. What I do when I'm ready to charge the refrigerant is I have my refrigerant already on the scale, already zeroed out. I open the valve that's located right here. That's going to allow liquid refrigerant to flow straight into my liquid line. The pressure in the tank will be much higher. It's going to flow into the liquid side. And as refrigerant flows in both directions, it's protected by the condensing coil here and the evaporator coil on the other side. So I don't get liquid back to my compressor. If I tried putting liquid into my suction side, and I started a compressor, I'd get liquid in my vapor pump and it would kill it, it would absolutely kill it. The other important thing is having this valve here. If I didn't have that valve there and I put refrigerant into my system, I would be pushing oil from the system into my micron gauge and it would cause it to read false or go bad. Having that valve is essential. Also, a lot of people don't have this, but I like this setup because I can put liquid refrigerant straight in with zero contamination, no contamination whatsoever. Very, very important to have no contamination for me. When I get done, I can shut this valve off and take everything apart. I don't have to worry about any contamination. Now that I have positive pressure in my unit, then I can put my valve cores, take the hoses off, put my valve cores back into the system on both sides. Once my valve cores are in, I can take all of this gadgets off. I can hook up my regular set of gauges or my probes and I can start the system up and then finish doing my charge, checking, whatever else I need to do. But this is the fast, quick, clean setup with zero contamination. But stay tuned, we're gonna add more videos of how we do this and we're gonna compare multiple different methods of pulling vacuum.